Hello and welcome to my NIOS 2 Softcore Hello World demo. Today we're going to be doing a NIOS 2 Softcore processor uh, using Intel's Cordis Prime um, running on a DE10 standard board. Um, so to start, we will go to Cordis and we'll do a new project wizard. So in our new project wizard, we'll just hit next here. We'll give it a location. Uh, I'm just going to create a new folder here. We'll call it video demo. And then in here, I'll create another new folder, which we'll just call hello NIOS. We'll call our project Hello NIOS as well. Um, the chip we're using is a 5 CSX FC6 D6 F31 C6. And we'll set all that quest uh, as our simulator. And we'll wait for that project to be completed. Okay, our project is now created. So the first thing we got to do is go into Intel's platform designer. Um, if you're familiar with Cordis, this tool has been renamed a few times. Um, it was originally named um, SOPC Builder. Then I got renamed QSYS, and currently the name is Intel's Platform Designer. A couple ways we can get there. We can go to Tools, um, Platform Designer right here, or we can just hit the Platform Designer tool on the toolbar. That will fire up Platform Designer, and then we can get started. Okay, platform designer is open, so we'll go ahead and uh, maximize this so we can all see well. Um, you'll see it, it actually brought in a component called Clock Force already. So we're going to just add a few things. We're going to add a NIOS 2 processor. And for now, I will just take the defaults on that. Um, I'll use the F version and we'll just hit finish. Um, the next thing we're going to need is some on-chip memory. And again, 4K is plenty to write Hello World, so we'll just hit Defaults. And the last thing I need is a JTAG UART. This is so we can communicate with the processor for debugging and getting text back and forth. And again, we'll take the defaults for those. Now that we've got all of that done, we need to wire this up. So the first thing we do is the clock in reset is going to get wired in right here to the debug reset request coming from the processor. And then we need to wire clock and reset to all of our peripherals. So the processor will get clock and reset. The on chip memory will get clock and reset. And then the JTAG UART will get clock and reset. Um, we also have coming out of the processor, we have a data master and an instruction master bus. So the on chip memory is going to need both of those because we are pulling both instructions and data out of the memory. Whereas the JTAG UART only needs the data. And the last thing I got to wire up here is we need to wire up the interrupt for the JTAG UART. The other thing I like to do is I like to rename these. Um, because it's kind of helpful later on. So we'll call that SRAM, and we're going to call the JTAG UART debug. So that's pretty cool. We got our system built, but you notice we have all this red down here. We have seven errors. Well, we can get rid of a number of those just by going up here and saying system generate or assigned base addresses. So if you'll notice, our base addresses are all pretty much the same and they're overlapping. When we do that assign base addresses, it's gonna give all of our stuff an individual address with its own address range. Now the other thing, the only thing you can get rid of these last two, 
We can double click on the processor. If we click on the vectors tag, we need to give it a reset vector and an exception vector. And we're just gonna set both of those to be to our on-chip memory that we called SRAM. So now we are ready to save this. And a little trick I found through the years is you don't have to create an instantiation template if you name your processor the same thing as you named your project. So if you call your processor what the top level is, it's going to save you from having to create an instantiation template. Now, obviously, if you're doing more FPGA stuff besides just the processor, you're going to have to create the instantiation template and do it the hard way. But for this easy demo, we're just going to cheat and kind of just name our thing the same thing. So we will do that. And it will bring up the saving dialog box here. Once that's finished, we can hit generate HDL. And the generate HDL is going to um, have some options. We're creating Verilog right now. We can create Verilog or VHDL or none. Um, I'm just going to leave these all pretty much default. And I'm just going to go ahead and hit that generate button. Okay, our generation is done. So I'll go ahead and hit close here. And now I'm finished with Platform Designer so I can hit Finish. Now what's going to happen when I hit Finish here is Cordis is going to come back and say, hey, you just created some IP. You should really import that. So we'll hit OK on that. We'll go up here to our File View, and we'll right-click on our files, and we'll say Add. That will bring up our Add dialog box. I'll hit the three little dots. We called our system Hello Nios. And under synthesis, we should see a file called Hello Nios, because that's what we named it, .quip, Q-I-P. That's the file we want to bring in. So we'll go ahead and hit OK. And then we will do a quick compile so that we can assign our pins. All right, our quick compile is finished. <clears throat> All went good. So we can go up here to our assignments and our pin planner. And we should only have one pin we have to assign, which is the clock. So we can look in the DE10 user manual and we can see that clock 50 is on pin AF14. So I can go here and I can sign my location to AF14 and I can set my IO standard. If we look, our IO standard is 3.3 volts. So we got to change that from 2.5 and we'll change this to 3.3. Um, I can close that, and now we can kick off the full build. And while that full build is starting, we can go ahead and start our software. We start our software by going Tools, um, NIOS 2 Software Build Tools for Eclipse. So we'll click that button, and in a second it's going to bring up a dialog box that will let us set our workspace. So we'll go hit Browse. And I'm going to take this out to my D drive. And we call this folder Video Demos. And then Hello Nios. I'm going to make a new folder in there. And we're going to call it Software. And I'll set that as my workspace. And I will hit OK. And Eclipse will now load. All right, Eclipse is now loaded, so we can go ahead and we'll maximize that. The first thing we're going to do is say File, New, NIOS 2 Application, and BSP from Template. That will bring up our creating our uh, application and our board support package. So the first thing we got to do is go grab our SOPC info file. Um, again, that is on D. Video demo, hello Nios, and it's that hello Nios.sopc info. Now you see why I kind of name everything. Also, when we open this up, it's going to parse the file, and what we'll see under CPU name is whatever we renamed it to. So if you rename your processor something unique, it's kind of a double check that you are opening the right SOPC info file once you get to this step. All right, it's done parsing our hello nios.sopc info, and you can see our CPU name is hello nios. I'm going to give it a name. I'll just call it hello nios. Um, now, importantly, we need to select hello world small. The small footprint 
basically is a lot smaller. It's running a lot smaller uh, C library. We only gave ourselves 4K of RAM. We don't have room for Hello World, which is running the full blown thing. So we'll hit next. Uh, Hello NIAS underscore BSP for our board support package is fine. And then we'll hit finish. That will go ahead and build our two projects. Okay, now that our projects are created, I can go ahead and right click on my Hello NIOS and I can say build project and that will compile and link my two projects. Okay, our projects are built. We can go back and check on Cordis's project, pro, uh, progress, excuse me. And we can see that it is not finished yet. So we will pause the video here for now. Okay, Cordis has finished synthesizing our project, so we can now go ahead and program our board. We'll hit the programmer. And we'll do our auto detect. We want to program that chip. Yes, change it. We'll double click there. Video demo, hello NIOS, that's my output file. And I'll go ahead and program. And there we go. And we can tell we're programmed because everything on the board is pretty much off and floating if it's anything because it didn't really tie anything, right? So we can now go back to Eclipse. And one of the first things we got to do now is do a run as and do a run configuration. Um, we'll click on NIOS 2 hardware. We'll go to our target. We'll hit refresh here. We'll hit apply. We can go ahead and hit close. And there's our target for doing that. Then all we've got to do is say run as NIOS2 hardware and it will download our code and go into our chip inside our soft core processor and run. Now Eclipse is buggy at best, so sometimes the code will be running in the background but you won't get any text out. Um, I should actually, while this is going, open up Hello World Small. And you can see all this does is say hello from NIOS 2. That's all the program actually um, accomplishes. So we will wait one second here. There we go. It has ran. And there is our hello from NIOS 2. So everything should be good there couple things I kind of want to show while we're in here. Um, there's the system.h. This is the defines for everything we put in our system. So here's all of my CPU defines. Um, here's my debug module defines. My SRAM. My IRQ stuff. So this is the defines for the entire system are in your system.h. And other things in your board support package, you have your HAL drivers right here. Um, we have our driver sources here for the JTAG UART. Um, we can change our message if we want. Uh, NIOS2 is really cool. Um, we can hit save and then we can just say run as NIOS2 hardware again and that will recompile our code. Um, one thing about Eclipse, you have to hit save. Um, running run or compile or build does not save your source files. That's a little annoyance with Eclipse. So one thing to remember. Um, this will invoke our make file, which will rebuild our top level, and then it will re-download all of our uh, our code to the soft core processor. So now we're launching the new configuration. 
Uh, if we go over to console, we can see all of that. Here we go, we're up to 9%, and now in a second it'll jump over and actually start downloading the ELF. So there we go, downloaded it to memory. There's our NIOS 2 is really cool, right? So we've now demonstrated configuring up a soft core NIOS 2 processor, putting it inside of a Cyclone 5 FPGA, downloading that synthesized processor into that FPGA, building a software project using NIOS build tools for Eclipse, and then running that code on that soft core processor inside the FPGA. That will conclude our demo for today.